In a world where nuclear war has begun, vampires fought back in super real 3D. Welcome back to another episode of learning about uh, cameras and editing and all that jazz. And this is still focused. <laughs> Uh, along with many other videos that I've been putting out lately about the Canon EOS R5C. I am in love with this new little camera that I've got. Super powerful camera. Uh, I only call it little because of the size, but it is actually quite a beast and does very well with my red. I love color grading footage. A big part of my look that I give clients is through my color grading. I mean, I love filming and everything, but the way I color grade is a big deal to me. Now, this is not an in-depth color grading tutorial, not yet anyway. What's more important right at the gate is I've already uh, been hearing from people and seeing from people that they're a little bit concerned if they've never worked with C-Log or even people that are just getting into C-Log and they're having trouble with it, uh, getting it out of the log look. Now, some people are adamant that they don't want to use LUTs. Uh, I love LUTs. I do use LUTs. I use them in different instances. Like I'll use combinations of LUTs. I'll put them at different intensity levels, but I'll use them in combination with a um, grading look that I create. Now I can get a grade to happen very fast and that's what I wanted to make you feel better about. Like check out how quick and easy this actually can be if you are approaching grading log footage and definitely stay tuned on this one because there's something very interesting I haven't heard anybody show or talk about uh, with this camera and the RAW and the way that it behaves inside of Premiere and it makes me question, genuinely question, is C-Log 2 kind of available through this camera? Because it's it's kind of weird. I, just check this out, ride the wave with me. First, what we're gonna do is, uh, we're just gonna hop over. Now, I'm gonna give an example. I'll give a few examples of shots. This is me. This is right here in this room in this exact setup. This is raw. Let me show you how easy it is to get this out of a log look when it is raw. So, all you have to have is your instance of Lumetri open. And uh, we're not even going to use scopes or anything, okay? You can get into all that later. I'm trying to make it as simple and straightforward and quick as possible. Watch how quick this can happen. Just take your saturation to, let's say, 175. This is to taste. Everything's to taste. But let's go with 175. Okay, we've added some color. And now we're going to bring contrast in. Let's go ahead and just take that over. Uh, and there it is at 100. Now, is that already out of the log look? I would say so. Uh, now, can we make it a little better? Sure, let's do a little bit of fine tune adjustments. Now let's bring up the highlights just a hair, just to give it a little more pop, and you can experiment with this. Let's experiment for a second with bringing the shadows down just a little bit more to give even more contrast to it. And then let's bring the whites up just a little bit more to maybe give it a pop. I don't want it to feel like it's low dynamic range, but I think overall that gives it a little more contrast. And uh, we're, we are kind of already done. We can test out the blacks here, maybe crop them just a hair. Again, all this is to taste. But look at that. Now, if I turn this off and turn it on, I mean, that is out of the log look. That is already there. I, that, that should not intimidate anybody. Now, if you're filming in RAW, it's automatically going to be this way when you bring it in. Even if you've used LUTs internally in the camera, this is the way it's going to look. If you do lose LUTs internally in the camera on your XF ABC, it will bake in that LUT, which a lot of people are complaining about. I personally believe that there's an easy firmware update. Um, also, people complain about the view viewing playback on the camera uh, not showing the LUT on your RAW footage. Uh, if you're trying to check your um, shot, but th these are another matter. I personally think those are very, very easy, easily fixed in firmware updates in the future. I hope Canon is listening. I think we should all voice our opinion if we want that to happen. So that's pretty much already out. That looks pretty good. So let, now let's go to, um, well, actually, before I leave this for a second, let me show you what I'm talking about. If we go over here, sorry, you have to click on your source. You have to have your effects control window open, all right? and you click on source, this is how you manipulate your raw file if you're not familiar with this. You click on this and then presto, there's your raw file. Now, I was testing this before I got in here just to make sure the shot was in focus. I bumped my exposure up by 0.2. Really, it was there. That's fine, I can get it back. I could add the exposure back in. But my point is, is look at this gamma. Now, people will say, but it's not really Canon Log 2, but it is definitely different than Canon Log 3, because watch what happens when I put it on Canon Log 3. Doesn't look right, because we graded it for Canon Log 2, because Premiere, for whatever reason, by default, makes all your RAW files go to Canon Log 
too. That's what it says. It behaves very differently. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hop over here and we're going to turn off that hook that I just created. We're going to do it again now in Canon Log 3. So I'm going to put Lumetri on. We're going to do the same process. I'm going to just tell you go add your saturation. This is one way of approaching color grade. I do it different ways as well, but this is the quickest, most direct way for beginners. So we're going to go with 175. We've added some color in. Now we're going to add some contrast. We're going to bring that over. Let's get it. It's already a little more contrasty with S log two. Okay. I'm sorry, three. S log three is already a little bit more contrasty. Let's put it like roughly about there. And now let's bring it to me. It looks a little muddy. Let's bring the blacks down just a little bit. Okay. That's going to kind of get it there. Okay. And then let's bring our highlights up a little bit. We're just kind of looking at this and trying to get it out of there. Let's check the shadows. I'm going to bring those up a bump. And then, boom, maybe I would go ahead and remember I took away that 0.2 bump on the exposure. I can add that back in here easily. I could do that on the raw file, but we just did it right there. And that's pretty close. That's pretty close. I would say maybe the highlight's down just a little. Okay, so we did it that quick. I could do it even faster. You'll get the hang of that. You can do it literally in 10 seconds. You can get it out of the log look, and it's not stressing or maxing out your computer in any way. I mean, it's not adding that much to it. And now here's the deal, though. It, there, there's that look, okay, and I can't get this to, I can't show this right here, but I'm going to put this up on the screen so we can see a side by side. But the end result is a little different. You do get a slightly different look if you're doing log two or log three. So there's where I basically placed it. To me right now, that feels the same, but I know once we go back to it, let's turn this off. Let's turn back on the look that I had created for log two, and then let's actually put it back in log two. And then there it's back to there. Now that I've done that back and forth, let's put these side by side. The log two is less contrasty uh, at the end result. And I'm almost favoring, I think, uh, well, I'll kind of figure this out because I'm still testing and learning. I think I like more of the grades that I've been playing around with in log, Canon log two. Now that's raw. Let's go ahead and go over to XFAVC. Now here's a, but well, before we do that, check this out, okay. So there is log two. You have this option to grade it this way. And as we jump over to XFAVC footage, which it's gonna be a very similar shot here. Now look at the, the way that the contrast is on this log footage out of the gate before we test it, and then compare it over here to this. Now if we go back and forth, just look at that. It's definitely less, less contrasting. And then you go to here, this is, this is baked in. You don't have the option in XFAVC to explore the C log two option, uh, but it's fine. So we've got this XFAVC and guess what guys, it's just, it's really just as easy, but I will say the end result of the raw always does look a little bit better to me. I just, that raw is, oh, so good, that 12 bit color. But here, check it out. We're gonna get it back here. Same concept. Let's just make our saturation 175, okay? And again, this is to taste. Now let's add contrast. Okay, something around there. And again, because this was log three, we had to do a few more adjustments to it. Log two to me looked better right out of the gate. You just added like basically 100% contrast and 175% saturation. You basically already had it. But with log three, I feel like we need to manipulate it a little bit more. So it's, it's just a little bit muddier. So we need to separate the contrast values a little bit more. So we're gonna play around with bringing our blacks down a little bit more because they still feel a little bit milky. Now this is feeling dark for a moment. Let's bring our shadows back up. Let's add a little bit in the highlights, uh, somewhere around there. And let's test out the whites. And that's pretty close. And maybe bring up our exposure by 0.2. Mm, and if I do do that, I kind of like that, but it, it is a little bit too much on the highlights. I'm gonna bring those back down a little. And then boom, you know, look, if we turn this on and off, I mean, that that is no LUT. That is just your basic adjustments. When you get the hang of this, you can literally do this in like 10, 15 seconds and you just get it out of that look altogether. Now, is this a final grade? Like we could totally go in and tweak more about it, uh, but that's a basic idea of how to get it out of that look and that already looks pretty good. Bounce over here and compare what we did with our uh, log. Where did we leave it? We left it on log two, so that was this grade here. And when I had graded this before, all these amazing poses, don't you like the way I posed? 0.2 on the exposure and that's pretty much where I put it. And you know, you can mess around with the white balance a little bit, like maybe that, 
maybe that's more like 4,600, somewhere in there. Maybe that's a little too blue. And again, you know, with the raw, you have those options. So I'm not going to linger here too long. Let's go to a different type of shot so you can see more comparisons. I will be up front with you and saying the rest of the shots are in raw because I have been filming mainly in raw. But again, it is the same quick process if you're just trying to get it out of uh, the log look and no LUTs. I'm noticing with the landscape environments, if, if skin tones aren't a primary large source thing happening in the shot, then a lot of times I'm actually just taking the saturation all the way up to 200 and sometimes even more. And I'll show you how to do that in this example. So for this landscape shot, the skin tones are very small amount of the overall shot. Skin tones, you don't want to be too oversaturated, but when it comes to an environment and a landscape, a lot of times I'm really enjoying making it super saturated, especially with that Canon color. So let's take it to 200. Now let's add in our contrast. We just took it to 100 because guess what? By default, this is in C log two. I would grade this different if we do so C log three, but for the moment we're just in C log two. You can just leave it there. And uh, now we're gonna just play around with bringing our shadows down a little bit more to give it even more contrast. Let's bring our blacks down just a little bit, you know, there. And then the uh, highlights maybe up a bump, you know, we don't wanna lose our, our dynamic range there, but that looks pretty good. And uh, maybe the exposure up by like a point two, you know, or maybe a point one. That was a little strong. Now to me, I feel like this could be even more fun with even more color. So let's say that you, in this single instance of Lumetri color, you wanted to add more saturation to it. Cause you can, please know you can, when I go into no advanced grading, I use multiple instances of Lumetri. If you go into your effects panel, so you could just go to video effects and it's in there. Color correction, Lumetri. And I have created a special folder just for favorites and I dragged and dropped Lumetri in there, but you can do multiple instances and you start getting a lot more control, especially if you're gonna get into masking. That's where you absolutely want to be using multiple instances. That gets a little bit more advanced. We're trying to keep this very basic, just giving you the general idea. Let's say in one single instance of Lumetri, you wanna add more color. Go to creative, that creative tab inside of there. And then look, you have an option for vibrance and saturation. You might be asking, what is the difference between vibrance and saturation? Well, they both behave and grab the footage just a little bit differently. The vibrance kind of skips the skin tones a bit more. It's trying to, it's kind of dodging the skin tones. Because again, remember I said you don't want to oversaturate the skin tones too much. In general, you want to base your grade around having great skin tones. And then whatever you can, if you want to go for an extreme grade, build around that as long as you're not screwing up the skin tones. Unless that's your look, like you're just totally not going for a natural look with skin tones. So vibrance helps you get there a little bit. It's going to boost the saturation around everything but the skin tones. For the most part, it will start affecting skin tones though, eventually. And then saturation, let's just give the example here. Here's saturation slider. See, it's kind of just gonna grab everything. So, you know, if we bump this up just a little on the vibrance and saturation, you can tick this box on and off for creative. And you can see the difference that we just did, right? Just a little bump of that extra saturation. You could probably even go a little more. I mean, it's just fun, right? Okay, so there's that example. Maybe we could bring these blacks down a little bit more. The more contrast you create and the darker that your shadows are, the more saturated everything is going to get naturally. The darker an image is, the more saturated it will be. This is one of the first days I went out with the camera and I was still, I wasn't even using a LUT in the camera and I overexposed everything. I was just looking at the camera through it with with S, uh, not S log, sorry, I have the Sony cameras here, with C log, and I was, I, I just could not see that well. It was bright, I didn't have the contrast there. I hadn't even learned how to do the focus peaking of the camera yet. I mean, I was just, I gotta shoot something. And I overexposed everything and it was still came out like this. Now, that being said, you could still bring down exposure values in here and then grade from there. Um, you know, and I would have graded it totally differently had I brought it down this much in here. And then the last example that I'll show on this one shot is let's go ahead and turn this, let's turn, you click back and forth between these tabs, your source and your color grading effects in here. And this is where you can access your instances of Lumetri. So we're gonna turn that off. We're gonna open this up, go back to our source, I mean, and we're gonna put this on log three. Now look how contrasty that is out of the gate. Now th this is not a problem. I've liked a lot of shots that I've graded with the, the log three. I'm just pointing out they're different. It's behaving different. So now we'll do the same process of grading and we'll see the, what the result is that we get. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add another instance of Lumetri on here. So I've put it in my favorites folder. So here's a new instance. Keep in mind this Lumetri panel, whatever adjustments you make here 
will only affect the last instance, the instance that is at the bottom of your multiple instances of Lumetri. So anything I do in here will not affect this top one, it will only affect this bottom one. If I wanna trade places with it to attack this one and have it over here in my uh, Lumetri panel, where it's a little bit more user-friendly, I can just drag it, rearrange it. But we're gonna go ahead and get this back to this new one. We're gonna do the same process. We're just gonna put it at 175 for color to start. Or actually, right, for landscape, we did do 200. Let's stick with that for the moment. And then let's add some contrast in. And then basically I'm seeing that the log three, the mid-tone blacks seem to be just a little bit more uh, milky, a little bit more faded. It's like it has more contrast overall on the far ends, but in the middle, it's always a little bit murkier. And so I'm finding that on the, on the Canon log three footage that I do have to play around a little bit more with my shadows that's going to bring, and my blacks. It's like I kind of just need to get those blacks a little bit richer and then kind of play around with the shadows one way or the other. If I bring my blacks down some and then bring my shadows back up, you, you just kind of toy around with it a little bit, but you'll, you'll get there relatively fast, guys. And then we pretty much have it there, and I would say for this, for fun, I would want even more saturation. So I'm gonna go down here to my Creative tab, and then I'm just gonna add in some vibrance that won't affect the skin tones too much. Look how much color can sit in there, though. This Canon footage and the log, the 12-bit color, I mean, we're just, let's just pump this up for a second and just see it's not getting muddy. It's not really breaking up or anything. It's very nice. I mean, I, the skin tones are a little too too rich there. But, you know, it. you have these amazing options, and then you can go in and start tracing stuff out with masks and, and make advancements that way. Let me give you an example of just a couple more shots real quick. This process will do it super quick. Uh, I'm not going to go back and forth anymore. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it on C-Log2, which is what it sets it to by default with these log files, uh, sorry, raw files. Uh, and we're just gonna go ahead and grade this super quick. Watch how quick we can do it. Let's go for speed here. I'm gonna crank up the saturation. I'm gonna bring my contrast over to 100 and boom, we're done. I mean, it's, it's pretty much already there. At this point, you just bring your taste in. Let's bring the blacks down a little. I mean, you know, and maybe we could add a bump on the highlights just to make people pop a little bring the whites up a hair, but I mean, this is just a taste at this point, you know? I mean, it's already out of log. I'm not saying that's the look I would go with. I went with some extreme looks. My white balance maybe was a little too yellow if I wanted it more this way. And then again, if I wanted, now that we can see some skin tones, let's just play around with vibrance. See how it, it brings this, it's kind of dodging the skin tones, right? But if I did saturation, watch the skin tones. See how they, I can't take it as far without them getting a little bit oversaturated. So that vibrance comes in real handy. And then we're pretty much done. Now let's say that you needed more contrast. I mean, again, that's what we're kind of already doing, but you just bring the blacks down some more. I mean, look at that, guys. Like, that, that's pretty quick. That's not hard. That's very easy. We'll do one more because I'm going to show you one more feature that you can keep in mind. Blueberries. We got blueberries. This is Still very best basic technique. I'm just gonna add one more element to your arsenal of basic color grading that you could have fun with. We're gonna leave it at C-Log2. We're gonna bring our saturation up to 200. We're gonna bring our contrast up to 100. We're gonna bring our blacks down a little bit. Yeah, we can bring it all the way down. Again, I overexposed the heck out of this. Just to have shown it, I mean, I did overexpose this. This is not where it should be. I'm just gonna bring this down a stop, okay? And then bounce back over to my color grade and here. And uh, now we can, it's like we can kind of toy around with it a little bit more. Now we could bring the highlights back up. We could bring the shadows down a little bit and we start getting more and more contrast. Bring those whites up to pop and then blacks down a little bit more again. Okay, cool. Now let's say I wanted to bring up, we can, we can play around with more vibrance and color and it's all there. But what if we just wanted to bring up blue because they're blueberries right? You wanted to attack just the blue or just the blue in somebody's eyes. Just with Lumetri, guys, it's it's not that hard. You just go over to your your HLS. I'm sorry. Well, you could do it multiple ways, okay? But here's, here's an easy way. You can just click on blue in your HSL um, category uh, tab, whatever you want to call this. And then, yeah, you literally can just kind of boost the saturation. And look, it's it's attacking just the blue, I mean, that is not that hard. And you can even make it more blue with playing around with the color temperature. It's going to attack just the spectrum of blue. You could do this with whatever color. 
and look, we've brought the blue up. We turn this off, back on, and you can attack the contrast of just that one color. See, it's not affecting the contrast of the whole image. You can sharpen just those that set of things. So this is a very, very cool tab, the HSL secondary. So I added one more element to your arsenal right there if you have not played around with this yet. And um, this kind of thing, it's just, it's it's really fun. You can dial it exactly in. But these kind of decisions, a lot of people say, ah, oh, we just want to get it in cam so they veer away from the log and footage and stuff like that. Um, you, just to have said it, there is no way to get this kind of manipulation and control of your image if you're trying to get everything completed and accomplished inside of the camera. How are you supposed to tell it to specifically attack the blues? You just can't. Now, do you have to do that? No. But I will point out that everything that you see done in the films that are like the creme de la creme of quality and amazingness and what can all the potential of what can be done, they are doing this. I mean, it, it, all of it is going through color grading. So if you're skipping that and you want to get it all in cam, just know it can always be a little bit better if you do some color adjustments in post because you can't grab those independent things while you're filming. And if you attempt to change your picture profile for every single shot that you set up, well, you're only going to get a few shots that day, so you don't. You just set it, you leave it, and it looks good in cam, but once you start comparing it side to side to an adjusted picture that you've done, it, the adjusted picture is going to win, like, every time, unless you're just terrible at color grading and you just don't know what you're going for. Um, so th that's my opinion, and my goodness, guys, if you're going to film in RAW, for God's sakes, take advantage of 12-bit color, because that is the thing. You can flex these and get extreme grades, and I gave examples. I, I like doing more extreme grades for fun, for music videos, for outlandish things, but I do a lot of corporate stuff, and it has to look very straightforward, too. So all that's in there. There's your in-depth basic beginner tutorial on how to color grade and get out of a log and an awareness level that I don't know what the hell is going on if it has C-Log 2 or not, this Canon R5C, but but it definitely behaves differently and I'm finding that I can grade, if I leave it in C-Log 2, I can grade it faster and I usually like the results a little bit more. I think the skin tones are a little bit more natural looking and I like the contrast values of where I get it. Now that being said, I might change my mind on that we, time will tell. I will keep testing, and I've definitely gotten some, somewhere. I just did it in S Log Three, and it's like I don't even want to look back. This just looks awesome because the camera is amazingly capable of producing these amazing, uh, high quality images that, again, are just right there with my Red camera, but a kind of a different look. The Canon is is definitely cleaner than my Red. It's so clean. The question mark for me that I want to explore next is, can I get it to feel dirty enough? to feel that rough filmic thing that I can achieve in the red much quicker. The red kind of has more of a natural ingrained film look and the Canon can create a film look but it is so clean and modern feeling. And I love that, but I wanna see if I can get it to go the other way too. So that'll be part of my testing in the near future. I hope that helps guys. If you subscribe, that is huge and it really, really helps endorse the idea that I could set aside more time to make more of these videos. This is not the only thing I do. I do do, I mean, I'm doing paid work with Rough Cut Productions, that is my company. And I stay very, very busy. It's very hard for me to work these in, but I really, really enjoy making these and I'd like to make a lot more. So the higher that subscriber count gets, the more of these I can make, I really appreciate it. That's all I'm asking if you enjoyed it. Um, and uh, yeah, all right, take care guys, peace.